Good morning on our Memorial Day weekend. Glad everybody's here. Uh, we're in the last page of the book, page 15, lesson on page 15. After we get through with our class this morning, we're going to hand out the other books, and, and we'll start it uh, next, next week, part two of How Do You Handle, volume two, next week. We get the prayer this morning. And, uh, Andy, would you lead some prayer, please? Well, the topic is sin. And uh, ask the question, has anybody sinned lately? Can you raise anybody sinned lately? Anybody sinned today? Not yet. Y'all do know what 1 John 1 10 says, don't you? <laughs> if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. We all do it. We all sin. We don't keep account of it. It would be impossible to keep account of it. Sin is doing that which is wrong. It's also not doing everything that's right. So again, it's one of those things that we can't keep account of and we don't need to. But what we want to make sure when it comes to our sin that was covered by the blood. That's, that's the key. You've got to have it covered. If not, then we'll have to give an account of it one day. As we stand before God and every sin that we ever committed will be there before him. and So we don't, we don't want that. We want to continue to be covered. But uh, question one, what is sin? Well, it's uh, disobedience to God's law. That's just the main part of it. 1 John 3 and verse 4, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Another definition that some give is missing the mark. Missing the mark or missing the target. It's almost like you have a target up there and, and you're going to shoot at that target. Well, you, you get back a certain number of feet and you shoot and you miss the whole target. Well, then you keep getting closer and closer and thinking, okay, I'm going to eventually hit it. You get right there on it, point blank, and you still miss it. How do you miss it? Well, again, that's what sin is. We miss the target. Uh, we try not to sin, but what do we do? We sin. We try not to, but we do. Uh, hopefully we're not sinning as much as we once were. Hopefully we're not. Hopefully we have learned from our sins and uh, we're doing better. We're getting closer to God. We're closer to learn His Word more and we, re we realize what sin is and we try to do our best to do better. But we always got to be on our guard against it. Never should we ever think, well, I'm in pretty good shape. I think I can handle it now. I can overcome this. Don't do that. Because if we do, then there's going to be a problem about the, when sin creeps back on us. So there's always a, a new sin awaiting out there. There's always a new temptation. And we think we got this under control. Maybe we do. But here comes another. Got to look out for it. <clears throat> Question number two. How is sin handled by the fool? Proverbs 10, verse 23. To do evil is like sport to a fool, but a man of understanding has wisdom. <clears throat> now, to some individuals, sin is, is like a sport. And they're looking for opportunities where they can sin. And they have no plan to stop. And it's fun to them. They want to do more and more and more and and that's a shame that it's that way, but it certainly is. And, and you'll hear them brag about it. They'll brag about what they have sinned, how they have sinned, what they have done. And, and, uh, and it's amazing when you get out into the, as we know, into the real world, what you will find, what you will discover from individuals. I know uh, before I went to preach, I was out there in, the, like we say, the real world. And there was a lot of bragging about sin about what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, and 
who they going to know all the details that go with it. And you don't always see that until you get out there in, in the workforce. And, and it's not every place you work will have that, but certain places do. They certainly do. I was talking to a young lady. She just went out into the, into the real workforce here in the last few months. And she's single. And she said what really has shocked her is how many married men have tried to get, go on a date with her. And they're married. Yet they're trying to, you know, go on a date with her. And she said she's shocked by that. Well, again, that's the real world. And a lot of places you work, you'll find that. A lot of sin taking place. So some individuals, it's like a, it's like a sport. They look forward to it. Then how about the wise there? Job 1 and verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, if there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? That's what the, uh, the wise man wants to do. He wants to shun it, stay away from it, get rid of it. I don't want it because I know what it can do. I know the potential of what it has and, and, and bring it about more and more sin. So we need to be more like Job, shun evil, stay away from it, and we don't want to be have the sin of, of a sport. We don't want that. Question three, what are some of the effects of sin? Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 there, verse 2, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. The main thing that sin does, it separates us from God. God is holy, he's pure, and he cannot tolerate, he cannot be around sin. When we sin, there's a separation that takes place. And the only way that we can get back to God, that we can approach God, is if we have been cleansed by the blood of Christ. When he looks at us, he sees cleansing, because the blood is covered. Blood's covered those sins. But unless that blood's there, well, again, he cannot look at us. We can't approach him because of our sin. Got to have the blood. James 4, verse 1, B. Where do wars and fights come from? Come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members. All wars... All fights are a product of sin. Uh, if God's word was practiced, there wouldn't be any more wars. But his word is not practiced. You have a, a lot of different reasons for a war, but it's all sinful. And again, terrible things come about when a war, what it does to, a, to the country, what it does to the families of those who are involved in it. It's not good, but it's all because of sin. Sin that's not, not un, in control. C, Genesis 4, in verse 8. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. Murder is a product of sin. If there was no sin, there would be no murder. All you got to do is you know, listen to the news, the local news. And this one and that one's getting murdered here and there and getting close to home as well. And uh, it has a snowball effect. And nobody's really addressing why all these murders are happening. It's because, it's not because the mentally ill, that's, that's, that's one reason they want to put on it, these people aren't mentally fit. Well, that'd be true. It's because God is no longer in their life. Until you put God back, Start putting him back. You're not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. God's got to come first. And when we, do, when we do that, we begin to love each other the way we should and respect one another and, and uh, love our neighbor. And we don't, we don't do the murder or things of that nature. So murder is a product of the effect of sin. Number four there, what are some different ways we can sin or types of sin? Uh, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, speaking of Eve, 
So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Adam and Eve completely disobeyed God. They ignored his command. And that's a, and again, that's one of, the, one of the different ways that we can sin, ignoring the commands of God. Knowing what was right, believing a lie. And that's what they did, they believed a lie. It's not that they, they disobeyed God, but they also they believed a lie. And again, that's, that can happen. We don't want to believe lies. But they believe the old lie of Satan, that everything would be okay, that she, they would not die, that they would be wise. All that goes with it, and, and uh, there we had a problem. The problem occurred. On B, Matthew 25, 42, For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Having no compassion, that's a sinful thing. Ignoring a need. When you have plenty, but you refuse to share. Again, that can be a, a sin as well. No compassion. Christ was very compassionate. He, uh, he gave over and over again in many ways that he could. And that's what he teaches us to do. Have compassion. So uh, sin could cause us to be a little bit greedy. And that's mine. I may need that in 100 years from now. Well, nothing wrong with sharing, helping. C, 1 Samuel 15 and verse 18 and 19. Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down uh, on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? This is concerning King Saul. He was sent by God to tell him to completely annihilate the Amalekites bring nothing back, and he, he didn't do that. He killed a lot of them, but he brought back the king, and he brought back a lot of the, the best of the animals. And when Samuel spoke to him about these things, he was very, Samuel was very displeased. He valued uh, his reasoning over the command of God. And when Samuel asked him, why didn't you do what God said? He, went, he said, well, I got these animals, the very best, to offer to God. That's the reason I spared those animals and spared that king, I guess. Certainly animals is what he said. Well, when God said destroy all the animals, he meant all of them, everybody, but his reasoning. So we've got to be careful that, our, that we don't reason ourselves into doing things that God would say don't do. D, Leviticus. Chapter 10, 1 and 2. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, but, but put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now they had fire in their censers, but they got it from the wrong place. They were to get that fire from the altar. When that altar was first uh, set on fire by God, when, with Moses and all that were there, that fire had to be continually from that original fire. But they got fire from somewhere else. And uh, God was displeased from that. That's what they did. And we don't know if there's a connection to it. <clears throat> but if you go ahead and read in Leviticus 10, uh, in verses 8 through 11, there's where the, we find verses there where God says, no alcohol in the tabernacle. Don't bring that in here. Is it possible that's what they were doing? They weren't in their right minds and, and drinking and, and uh, disobeying God from that standpoint and look what it, where it cost them. Could have. So they had the wrong judgment, misguided judgment. Then we have E, Revelation twenty two eighteen. 
For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Do not add or take away from the word of God. So don't, don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Uh, you have a lot of people who are trying to get, get, our, get our attention. They want you to think that there's someone special. they got a special knowledge that God has given to them and and on it goes, miracles and things like that. I saw where uh, one particular, I never heard of him before, but he was deceiving the people. He, had a, he found a special ink, and he, he it was invisible ink, and he put a, a cross on his forehead. And when uh, he began to perspire, and that ink mixed with the, the salt content in his body, it would turn red. So he's up here preaching, and the Lord's going to send me a sign that I'm, I'm really here telling you what's right. And all of a sudden, he starts sweating, and here comes this cross with a pair on his forehead. And, he's, and the people say, oh, it's got to be, got to be true. Again, that's somebody's adding to it, trying to deceive, deceive the listeners and such. And Well, they caught him in that, but nothing to be done about what he did. But anyway, there's individuals trying to add to or take away from the Word of God. Let's see. Which one was that on? Which one? Oh, five. Okay, we're on five. All right, question five. What, what are some wrong ways people try to handle their sins? Well, Genesis 3, 12, and 13... Adam and Eve, then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Blame somebody else for our sins. That's pretty popular. Just going to go out here and blame others. It's been around a long time. It still happens today. Uh, even if you do blame someone else, you're still in the wrong. Even if someone does cause you to sin, you're still in the wrong because you did such. If you notice here, uh, first thing Adam did, he blamed the woman, and then he blamed God. The woman gave it to me. Wait a minute, God, you gave me the woman, so it's your fault. Let's be sure to blame God for our sin. See how that goes. But anyway, uh, Adam blamed the woman, and blamed, or blamed Eve, and then blamed God, and then Eve blamed the serpent, and on it goes. B, Genesis 18, verse 12. Then Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. This is when the promise came, her having a child. Isaac would be the one that would be. And, of course, she, uh, she blamed her age. Well, I'm just too old to have children. Can't do that. Uh, my husband, he's too old as well. Don't use age as an excuse. Don't use that age as an excuse. Some might say, well, I'm too old. Some might say, well, I'm too young. Well, God can use all ages. He can do that. He can use it. So let's not, uh, as long as we got the health to do it, we need to do our best to, to serve in the abilities that we can. C. 5C, Joshua 7, 20 and 21. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50, 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent, with a silver under it. When they went to destroy uh, Jer uh, Jericho, God said, you don't bring anything back. You completely destroy the city. Well, Achan was a part of it. Well, they came back. They destroyed the city. The next battle, they went to Ai, and they got whipped. Israel did. A little bitty town. Whipped them. And Joshua wanted to know what's going on. And God was told them there's sin in the camp. 
There was sin in the camp. And it came out. Achim was the one that did it. And he had a pretty good loot here. And you remember what it cost him? It cost him his life. It cost him his family's life. Everything he had was destroyed because of his coveting, wanting more. So uh, we think, if I can get this, I'll be happy. Well, no, we won't because we're not happy yet. We still want something else, something else. Got to be careful of, of coveting things and it goes against God's way. And then D, 2 Samuel 11, verse 15, it's concerning David, and he wrote the letter saying, Send Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. David's trying to cover up the uh, pregnancy of Bathsheba. Uh, if he can get Uriah dead, and then he'll could be if he claimed that the, well, the baby's Uriah's, but it didn't work that way. Uh, Uriah did die. But it did come out that it was David's. So, again, uh, covering up. Uh, as the saying goes, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you're not going to fool all the people all the time. It's going to come out. Question six. Is it possible to sin while doing things that are not wrong? 1 Corinthians 8, 8 and 9. Uh, but food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we better, nor do we, if we do not eat are we the worst. But beware lest someone, this liberty of yours, becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. Uh, something may not be wrong in itself, but somebody, their conscience may bother them to do that. You don't force it upon them. You don't say, well, it's okay. If the conscience violates your conscience, stay away from it. Even though it may not be wrong. But uh, some individuals will, uh, won't do certain things, violates your conscience, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, don't do that. Don't be a stumbling block. Don't push something on somebody that they be, won't feel comfortable with doing. Seven, what is necessary for the forgiveness of sins, Hebrews 9.22 According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. Without shedding the blood, there is no remission. Again, the, the shedding of blood has got to take place. I know that blood is out of Christ. It has to take place in order to have forgiveness. <clears throat> Number eight, what are the conditions that God attached to forgiveness of sins? Uh, Luke 16, 30 and 31. This is the... Uh, story of the rich man of Lazarus and as and he said no father Abraham but if one goes to them from the dead they will repent but he said to him if they do not hear Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded the one rise from the dead got to hear the word of God even if somebody came from the dead and tried to convince somebody that you're wrong as in the case here that though the rich man wanted Abraham to go or Lazarus to go and, and try to convince his five brothers. And that wouldn't work. They have the word. We've got to hear the word. We've got to be taught the word in order to uh, understand how bad sin is and understand what we do to get rid of it, forgiveness of it. B, Luke 13, 3, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. There's repentance. There's understanding that I have sinned, and then I got to repent and turn away from it. Judas had remorse. Well, he was sorry he did what he did, but he never asked God for forgiveness. He never, there's got to be that repentance. Uh, sometimes uh, repentance isn't taught the way it should be. And that's one thing, you know, the sinner's prayer that's out there, the sinner's prayer, you say this prayer, and it's, which is false doctrine. Everything they say is great. There's nothing about repentance in the sinner's prayer. That's why many have turned against it. In the denominational world, turning against it, which is good. It's not right. There's nothing there about repentance. Oh, I, I love Jesus. I want to be my Lord. 
I'm going to continue to do what I've always done. That's not repentance. And then C, Acts 22, 16, concerning Paul's conversion. He was told by Ananias, and why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. There's got to be baptism involved for the remission of sins. That's when one's sins are forgiven. That's when the blood of Christ cleanses us. Not before baptism, but when we come out of the water, baptism takes the part of cleansing. On the bottom down there, the classroom questions, is sin more enjoyable than righteousness? Well, sin is fun. If it, if it were not fun, we wouldn't be doing it. It's pretty fun. Uh, it satisfies the fleshly part of man. Uh, doing right is fun as well. When we do right, that satisfies the spiritual part. That's what we want to satisfy. So uh, sin, both of them are fun, but they have a different outcome. Do the right thing and you'll satisfy the spiritual part. Number two, is it possible for a person to completely live above sin? The well, answer is no. Romans 3.23 answers that. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have. And then three, why do we tend to repeat the same sins over and over? Well, it's a struggle. Uh, there will be certain sins that we will overcome and there will be sins that we we'll, may always struggle with. When a person becomes a Christian, there may be a there may be a time period there they're going to struggle to overcome these things. And, uh, but uh, we don't give up the fight. We don't give up on it. We continue to do so. If we ever give up, then it's got us. Then they get us. So don't give up. So that's sin. Any comment on sin? All right. We'll pass out the books for next week. I got a couple of volunteers who are doing that. We got plenty of them.